Jeremy engages his students in a geocaching challenge. They will ultimately be writing about their experiences and creating a user's handbook for geocaching. Once the search is over, students have time to think, plan, talk, and write. Graphic organizers, anchor charts, explicit feedback, vocabulary study, and blogging all prepare students for their culminating task. Multiple entry points, various groupings, and ongoing support make this an inclusive and enjoyable learning experience for all students. In the classroom, we did the geocaching project. Geocaching comes from the French word caché, which means to hide. I took a lot of my students' interests, and a lot of them are very active outdoors. So I tried to find an example of something that would tie into the math curriculum, which is often abstract for many of our students, and try and tie it into their interest. And the first thing that did pop into my mind was this geocaching. So taking the lines of longitude and latitude, and using that cardinal um, system, and bringing my students out into the real world and using that as an example. Um, it was just a matter of finding one close by that we could access easily. All right, so as you remember, we're in the cemetery, so we need to be very respectful of what's going on and the, what is here. So we need to be watching where we're going. I know you're looking at your screens to find out the distance. Does everybody have the right screen up now? They know where they're in general direction they're heading in? Yes, yes. yes. Yep. yep. Any questions before you head out? Taylor? On the way, can you look at graves? Of course you can. That's part of what we're here is to see the history of Woodville, okay? I don't want to step on it. Is it competition? It's not really. It's a matter of seeing who can find it and working with the data that you have to find the ultimate goal, right? Same as we did in the schoolyard. GPS says it's down. There was a lot of jargon tied into it, and we spent a lot of time on the front end getting them comfortable with the language so that when we got the GPS units and they started using them, they were able to really understand what it was. I found it really brought home that idea of the cardinal system for those kids. They really now do know that there are these imaginary lines around our world and how they connect to them and how they can move between them to find different places and things. For the geocaching um, GPS units, I actually contacted the local high school and they have a program where they use them in the high school and I was able to borrow them for a three week period. Higher, lower, pointing more over here. Yeah. What's the coordinates? Maybe we can read them it. out. No, 44, 24, 499, West, Theo, 78, 59, 743. Uh, we're going geocaching. Geocaching is when someone puts uh, an item that they want someone else to take. The GPS helps us by. It has an arrow and you, it has meters on it and everything. Yeah, it has the coordinates of where it's hidden. We just type it in, there's a button that you can press and type it in and type in the coordinates. And then it tells you all the meters and everything. Yeah, how close you are to it and how long it'll take. I wish all of school was like this so I'd keep coming. Yeah, I'd actually enjoy coming <laughs> to school if we got to do this every day. Yeah. It's awesome. As reinforced by American psychologist John Dewey, so simply adding experience to the classroom does not equate to learning. For experiential learning to be truly effective, it needs to involve goal setting, experimenting and observing, reviewing, and finally action planning. This complete process allows one to learn new skills, new attitudes, or even entirely new ways of thinking. More recently, David Kolb suggests that there are four stages in experiential learning that may occur in any order. Concrete experiences, observation and reflection, forming abstract concepts, and testing new situations. With this theory in mind, I designed a geocaching activity that provides my students with access to each of these four stages of learning. Students gain a strong understanding of the topic as they work with a partner and use a global positioning system to locate a hidden object or cache. 
The use of the GPS requires them to apply the knowledge previously learned in the classroom, and it encourages each student to become an active participant in this concrete learning experience. Students use their analytical skills to conceptualize the imaginary lines intersecting around our globe in order to complete the task. This is a difficult task, however, with the use of the GPS, the students are better able to see how their movements are tracked as they maneuver around between the lines of longitude and latitude. As we search, students apply the skills taught in the classroom in unfamiliar contexts. Moreover, using a GPS inside the school that is similar to the GPS that many of my students use with their parents while driving in the car together validates and brings the outside learning inside the school. This helps my students see the value that experience has in the learning process. After finding the cache, we return to the classroom where students have the opportunity to reflect on their experience and learning through the use of an online voice blogging system called VoiceThreads. Posting to a blog or voice thread requires thoughtful planning, revising, and editing. However, my reluctant writers approach these authentic tasks with a lot less fear than the traditional pencil paper writing tasks that they have done in the past. Many learners, especially the boys in my classroom, find it difficult to express their creative ideas and thoughts in written form. Too often, they fail to see the rewards for the amount of effort that they have put into the task, so I provide them with a meaningful experience within which to learn. Mm -hmm.